peace within, peace between, peace among. And I would, I am, I was gonna say I would love to, but I am, I am loving to welcome Leona Gallant as our presenter this morning. Welcome, Leona. Thank you, thank you. Um, I'd like to start by uh, just saying uh, who I am and uh, introducing myself a little bit to you and then telling you my experience with a, an amazing person uh, that we all know as Virginia Satir. And, and then talking to you about another amazing, wonderful woman that I've had the opportunity to be a part of her life for over 20 years. Anyway, um, my name is Leona Flamand Gallant, and my native name is Shishipikwe. And Shishipikwe is a Cree for a uh, duck woman. <laughs> and so when I got that name, I kind of laughed, you know, I thought, oh my goodness, duck woman. And what I, what I recognized was that Ducks know how to swim on water, which I have a little bit of fear of growing up in Saskatchewan. And um, they know how to fly in the sky, which is a beautiful way that we take our imagination and go anywhere we want and fly wherever we want with our imaginations. And, and uh, knows how to walk on this beautiful mother earth that we have and knows how to put her feet in the mud and in the uh, field, feel the thickness of the mud and the water and the uh, warmth of the uh, soft earth from the sun. So it's, um, it's a beautiful name for, for me to uh, be a part of. I grew up in uh, uh, Northern Saskatchewan on a, on a farm. A little hot, what what you'd call today is a hobby, hobby farm. For us, it was a farm uh, where ten children lived, and mom and dad, and in a little house. And <laughs> we had an amazing experience doing that. And at one point in our lives, and when I was a teenager, we moved to Vancouver Island, where I live today. And when I moved to Vancouver Island, it was like I remember coming across and seeing the ocean and feeling like I had come home. And why, why I felt like at this part of the world that I had come home, I have no idea, except that it's never left. I have a sense of feeling home here. And as I grew up and had, I had um, got married, had four children, I have a seven grandchildren and four great-grandchildren right now. And so I have a, a bountiful family. And in my 40s um, is when I met Virginia Satir on my route to um, creating a career for myself that I really knew was a part of me. And what happened was that in Nanaimo, there, there we have an agency called Family Life, and they brought a film of Virginia's, and they showed her film. And I, I went there as part of, because I knew that what I wanted to do is I wanted to learn from masters. I wanted to take the courses that I needed to take from universities, and, but I really wanted to learn from masters. And when I saw this film, and I'm sure that there's so many people here that have had the same experience with Virginia, is that I knew I, I knew that I had come into my own heart and that the world had just opened. Something, something so amazing had opened. And I knew the direction I would go. Like if you come to a crossroads, roads, you turn to your left, to your right, I knew I didn't have to turn any other direction, but straight ahead towards what she had to give in our world. And I still feel that, um, that direction. And as I look at everyone here, and I know that each one of you have had an experience of 
um, Virginia Satir's work and doing that kind of work yourself, there's no way that I could feel like I'm separate than who you are and with you. And, and um, there's a sense of connectedness that happens. And I think that she created a community in our world that is still connect, creating community today and still bringing uh, the beautiful, amazing understanding that she had of how we could be in our world in peace. And, uh, and as we work towards that, and as we come into uh, what the reading was telling us today, uh, the amazing understanding that we have of moving towards peace. I, yeah, I met Virginia at a workshop on Haven uh, on here on Gabriel Island. And I'm the person in the in the blue here with the big glasses, and uh, she's holding my hand. And it's like it's like when I was with her that whole month. It was like she held my hand the whole time, but she didn't. But I felt it. You know, just holding her hand once it makes you feel like you're always holding her hand. <laughs> There's a sense of feeling close to her, and why that is, uh, what is it that uh, brings people together? And you can look and at each other and say, oh, I know you somehow, you know? And um, she was an amazing person and, and to look at her picture right now and to hear her reading this morning from Linda, uh, I just really feel her presence here at this moment. And when, uh, when I went to, when I took her training, it was so new, like what she was doing was so new in our world that uh, there was nothing written yet about what she did and how she did it. And there was people like Maria and John and Jean were at this workshop that it was at there and they were writing down everything she said as, as a way of putting together a book because her magic was so uh, magical that people didn't quite know how to uh, how she did what she did how did she manage to bring forth what she brought forth and her ideas and her way of being uh, around working with family and working with individual and working with community self other and context was like uh, like a big drink of water to a parched throat. You know, it was like, wow. And so getting to know her at that time of my life created uh, a way of being in the world that influenced pretty well everything I did, my work life, my family life, and my community life. And I'm sure that every one of you have those same kinds of stories. And so I moved from there to moving into um, an agency in town, a native agency called the Friendship, Native Friendship Center. And um, met this amazing woman named Grace Elliott Nielsen, who you will see the video of right now. And worked there for over, I started there in 89 and I, finished in working there in 2009, got on the board in 2013, and I'm still on the board right to this day. So I've got a lot of experience of the Friendship Center and how it's been in our world. And when COVID happened, and as it's beginning to shift and change and open, I knew without a shadow of a doubt that I wanted to put something out into the world that could help us to move from, from the chaos and give us a path to a new way of being in our world so that we don't go back to status quo, that we somehow find a way to not go back into status quo. So I think Virginia had a, a template that was amazing for us to take what 
she knows and what she taught to this world today. And I knew that if I put out what this agency in small than Nanaimo is doing, that it would be a success story in our world. And we need success stories. We need success stories like we just need them like candy. Um, and not so much like candy, but like total wholesome food. Um, so as I thought about what it is that I wanted to put out into the world, I came to an understanding that what I wanted to project from telecom was what was on scene. What is there, what was on scene in that agency that made it work, that made it run, that made people want to be there, that, uh, that became a, a total complete helping agency in our community? What was there not seen? It's like the, um, the essence that rises to the surface uh, that Virginia talks about our essence. Well, there's an essence here that, that is amazing in that place of uh, what it is that this group of people have put together and, and made visible and continues to work. And not that this work is easy. This is, and not that this is an easy, um, this has been very, very difficult to keep going. And so I called a group of people together who is the staff, the board, and the friends of Telecom, people who've been there before, people who are friends. I've called them together and I told them this, that this is what I wanted to do. And I was like totally blown away because it was it's a collaborative, I knew it had to be collaborative. It's not one person's idea or it's like a whole group of people came together and jumped on board. Very busy people, people working in universities, people working full time. Uh, just amazing. I jumped on board and said, let's do this. Volunteering their time and their beautiful, beautiful knowledge and education and everything, just volunteering to work collaboratively to put something in our world, put out something in our world that is a success story. And that, and when I say success, I don't mean that it's making a lot of money or, but it's a success, but it's because it, it's an, a way that this little agency has learned how to totally keep its own cultural, um, machine hub in in a world that it's not easy to especially in the business world to stay in that hub place of uh, making it all work as a wheel so that it turns and can create and can move and can shift and can be what it needs to be so that was exciting that is exciting so we decided to do a film and a book. So the film is almost finished and we are today gonna to see a link of that film. And then after this is over, I'm meeting with uh, eight people who are putting the book together. So I am, I am really pumped, I'm really excited. And I thank you so much for listening and for being a part of this because I think that as we settle into each one of us, has a way of being in our own world and can can somehow get to a place where we know what we want to create and we know how we want to push it along. So if that's okay, Jennifer, I'd like to show the film.
Uh, my name is Grace, Grace Elliot Nielsen. Uh, Elliot was my maiden name, and uh, my traditional name is Teoktonach, which is my great-grandmother's name. And Teoktonach was a medicine woman and a healer, and I also feel that I have a lot of connection with my ancestors. And uh, I, I feel their guidance a lot of the time in the work that I do. And I know the elders always said to me that, I said, I'm going to start working on building community, working with children. I always kind of felt a strength, though, that I, I needed to do something. And I always said, I don't want to see children in pain or feel less than like I did. I'm going to do whatever I can to make that change in my life. That was my life's journey I felt I needed to do. I'd been really negotiating for an um, ABE program because there wasn't an Aboriginal one. So I kept it up and kept it up, and I asked Nanaimo Band, I asked Nanus Band, and they came in as a partner, and we got the first Aboriginal ABE program. <laughs> Do your own work, because you can't help anybody else. You can't help yourself unless you do your own work. All kinds of people come to Tillicum. It's uh, every door is the right door and you find your place and you start out with different programs and services. However, everyone is guided and led into doing their own healing to move forward in a good way and to share that healing and that knowledge with future generations. And what makes Tillicum so incredibly powerful is that they hire people that align with the culture of Tillicum and the indigenous people, which is a collective culture. Um, all of my trauma work and everything that I do with my knowledge keeper, Wayne, um, is everything comes through a collective lens, which is uh, reflective of the indigenous culture versus the individual philosophy of a colonized culture. And that's what makes Tilikum so incredibly special. You know, the position I have with working with uh, the children downstairs, I've been honored to have a position down there working with them and doing the smudging and doing the drumming and watching them dance. You know, they've, they've given me back my own childhood and they've showed me what uh, innocence is and, and uh, how, what purity is and how, uh, what life would be like without trauma. That's what uh, the, the little ones down there teach me. And uh, that's my goal is to, uh, to help others feel the same way I do and to teach them that we are all the same in that no matter how much traumas happened to us or what's happened to us in our past, we can all heal. For cultural recreation, uh, we provide after school programs, youth drop-in programs, youth group programs, summer camp. Um, we do certain events for uh, Aboriginal days, special holidays, have activities for our children and youth and their families within the community because uh, it just seems that the, the population that we are servicing, um, they are a vulnerable group that live in poverty so it's really challenging to find activities at free costs so that their kids can, you know, participate in sports and different recreation activities. A lot of the prevention work needs to be done at a really, really early age um, to have these healthy young 
people. So if we can do it earlier, so with daycare, we're able to instill a lot of those values. And then also the support to the families with these little ones. Because again, I think that's something that we're trying to adjust, ad address and change is how um, families function and how um, yeah they role model to their kids as well and giving them healthy choices and the support. Tillicum looking at the needs of the community, um, we saw that a lot of kids were being apprehended right at birth at the hospital with some of these young mums. And how is it um, that young mums are supposed to know how to parent when they've been brought up in foster care. They don't have family supports. Um, and yeah, being a new mom is a challenging thing. So with the young moms, we're able to um, support them and uh, in the way they're living. Because friendship centers don't get a whole lot of funding and we've managed to um, get grants and We've been able to, I think we have 68 programs now and 110 or 115 staff. Good afternoon, Tolica Mayla. Transfer of knowledge, transfer of culture, transfer of everything comes out through the bridge building of elders. And that memory, that memory, that experience is so critical. It's a model of history that just continues to unfold in a wonderful, wonderful way. So we have been doing the novel study, The Absolutely True Die of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexi. And today what I'd like to do is I would like to review reservation life as experience. So we've been trying to support the community as much as we can um, with different things like food hampers to try and um, alleviate some of that stress. So we created our youth and elder building and we did a model where they could interact with one another. Um, again, trying to bring that connection and that bridge back um, to elders and youth and uh, trying to create that model. And um, I think it's been valuable for those youth and then to have those connections to the elders. Still to this day, I try to help people with addictions and I am grateful to Tillicum for all this opportunity that they have given me to help. And hopefully I can continue to do that. And smudging is just a preparation, cleansing ourselves and cleansing the space and blessing the pole. We decided that we wanted to do something for the um, murdered and missing women and then we put a, a proposal in to, to do a poll and the poll we thought would be very good to have the eagle on top with his wings spread out to the sky and his spirit uh, to protect the, the young woman that would be the pole below the eagle. And then the second piece would be the young woman that, uh, representing all the young murdered and missing women and representing the spirit and the protection from, from the universe uh, and always remembering the mothers and daughters and, and uh, the young women that had gone missing. It's not only important for the the spirit, but it's important for the family. It brings it to life, brings it to love, brings it to connection, and connection is so important. I'm hoping we can get back to that point where everybody can just work together to create that uh, place where everyone feels safe and are able to live in peace.
um, I want to acknowledge David who did this film. Um, he's, um, uh, he works out of Victoria and he caught the spirit of, of the film and he worked tirelessly and he's an amazing, amazing photographer and film filmmaker. So um, yeah, I just want to acknowledge him at this moment because um, because of his work and and that he was able to catch what was on scene and bring it to the forefront. And um, yeah, so I really acknowledge that. I uh, at, at the beginning of the, I want to I want to read something from Virginia Satir's book, uh, written by Laura Dobson and Maria Gamore, and it's it's short, but it because of what was in the film, I think it's really important. Um, Virginia believed that all levels of human interaction need congruent communication in which intention aligns with verbal and nonverbal messages. She believed people could teach and learn congruence. My thesis is both simple and logical. If we bring up children in a peaceful context in which adult leaders model congruency, the children will become peaceful adults who in turn will create a peaceful world. Mm. And it's, it's like, um, just letting that sink in, like Virginia, uh, her, her, her consciousness, her, what she brought into the world has been in the world since the beginning of time. What's happening here, uh, Grace is connecting to, to what makes our world a world of peace if we connect to it. And, and it's like in the reading, you don't, you don't, uh, you somehow encompass it all and look beyond what's there in some way, shape, or form. And with Tilikum and the and the work that Grace has done from the from she started from a coffee shop into right now um, with a hundred and some staff and a three huge humongous buildings. One of them is moving towards being a village, uh, connecting not only to native culture, but to all cultures. And um, in the medicine wheel, all people are there. So it's, it's like somehow as we learn this connection <laughs> and work with it in the way that Virginia, because she was, she was real. <laughs> I mean, all of us know that. You don't get away from nothing from her. <laughs> and it's the same with Maria. Like, you know, we would, uh, I took a lot of training from Maria. And um, by 11.30 at night, we'd be all out of it. Like, you know, and here this woman, uh, and we're not leaving here until this is done. You know, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, we're still there. You know? <laughs> and beautiful, beautiful uh, strength of commitment to the process and to the human being and to the ability to know that it can shift, we can shift. We can shift the world, you know? And Anyone when we- up? Yeah, um, go ahead. About, about three minutes, three more minutes and then it might be okay. a lovely time to go into breakout rooms. Okay. Um, I know at the beginning of the film, this this reading, this thing that happened was uh, quite quickly and hard to read the whole thing. So I'd just like to 
to re reiterate what this center is built on. Justice, fairness, and equality for Aboriginal people and all people who become a part of Tilikum Lalem Agency and all people of the world through a holistic approach to programming and services. The philosophy is one that encompasses all people in the community who request our assistance. Yeah, so that, that was that right at the beginning of the, uh, and so we didn't talk very much about the fact that uh, this is holistic and how Grace says holistic means holistic is that the work starts from the womb to an elder. We have programs that hit from the womb to an elder and all in between. And it, I remember when I first went to Virginia Satir, she talked about what happened, uh, um, an egg and a sperm. Uh, that was really, really important. You, we come from an egg and a sperm and then we grow. And um, she took us to, to uh, eldership as well. So it's like we have within us what we need to make this world work. All right. Riona, do you want to read those out for people? Okay, what was your personal responses to the video? Your feelings and your thoughts, not what um, not what you think it it's saying, but what is it saying to you inside yourself? How does today's presentation re reflect Satir's deepest values, beliefs, and hopes for our world? How might this how might this be relevant or useful? in your life personally and professionally. Where do you see this holistic model working in your own communities? 